Welcome to day 572 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. Remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DeSoFi. So, Brian, there's a lot of big news today about Jack Dorsey, what he's doing, his uh, tweets about DeSo and the future of at protocol. Can you tell us what at protocol is? Yeah, so yesterday, yesterday afternoon, at protocol was unveiled by Blue Sky. Uh, at least it came out of the experimental phase of of it of the project. Uh, so I, I just want to dive into what Blue Sky's app protocol is, uh, and then we can get into Jack Dorsey's tweets about DESO, which is of course decentralized social. Uh, and at the end, I can kind of compare the two, so I can compare app protocol and DESO in a few ways. So Blue Sky, uh, which was created by Twitter in 2019, so about three years ago, in order to push forward decentralized social protocol, this, this, this idea that, that many within Twitter had, uh, the Blue Sky team wanted to decentralize social media. Uh, Jack Dorsey got behind this idea. And they just announced uh, that they're rolling out authenticated transport protocol. Uh, at protocol for short, AT protocol. Uh, it actually launched as an experiment back in May. So approximately six months ago or so, five months ago, it launched as an experiment. It's out of the experimental phase. Blue Sky is not owned by Twitter. So even though it's spawned out of Twitter, uh, it isn't actually owned by Twitter, but rather it's owned by the founding team of the Blue Sky project. Jack Dorsey is, of course, the one who announced it in 2019 in a tweet, and he's pushed it forward. He's been he's been talking highly of it, uh, but he has no ownership and no real affiliation with Blue Sky or the App Protocol. So, what is the App Protocol? Uh, it's a new federated social network, and by federated. What they mean is that the network is not run from a single site, but from multiple sites, which communicate with, with each other, uh, sort of like how email works. So like if you're familiar with email, you can have different email clients that pull up the same data. So you can, you can open that email. Uh, they work together with that data. Um, it's very similar to DSO, I think, in some ways. Uh, which is, like I said, a decentralized social blockchain that launched in March of 2021. Uh, it's similar in that on DSO, different nodes are like front ends. And those front ends push and pull data to a shared database. Uh, so you can have different websites that share the same database. But this happens, of course, on the blockchain. Uh, this... Basically, the app protocol is going to allow users' accounts to be portable, uh, able to log in on various sites that connect with that data. Uh, it also allows for open algorithms. And that means that we'll know why things rank in certain ways. And I'm guessing that other, other sites can use different algorithms and they can show, show the users what they're using. And it's, it's funny because Ed and I, we actually were accused of being in cahoots with Twitter at one point when we were back in our Twitter days. Uh, and they said that Twitter paid us or we we're working with Twitter. Uh, and that's because our tweets were always ranking really high. And like we could reply to former President Trump's tweets and our reply would usually be first or second. Um, it wasn't that we were in cahoots with Twitter in any way. Uh, it was just that we understood their algorithms. And I, I would say we sort of reverse engineered their algorithms and not, not really, but we, we, we tweeted so much that we started to learn like what would rank a post higher, what would rank a reply higher. And we use that to our advantage. So this would mean open algorithms, meaning that everybody would know exactly how the algorithms work. So even if they were games, everybody could game them. And so there, you wouldn't really be able to game them. Uh, also, the app protocol, uh, the guides are actually available right now. Uh, you can access them at, at proto.com front slash docs. Uh, this, if you're a developer, this is a trove of information. Uh, I don't understand some of it because it's like coding talk, but it's definitely something you want to check out. So is this a competitor with blockchains like DSO? 
Uh, I think that's a good question that a lot of people are asking. And you can tell from some of the comments to Jack on DSO that some people probably viewed it as that. Uh, DSO has been around for a year and a half now. It's rapidly been developing over that time. Uh, DSO is a blockchain and it has built in monetary features. It has NFTs, creator coins. And I think most importantly, it's entirely on chain and it has its own token. So this token kind of correlates everything and, and, and makes everything work together because it has monetization features and all of that. At Protocol doesn't even mention blockchain. There's no mention of blockchain on Blue Sky, on App Protocol, by Dorsey, by anybody. Uh, and I'd say it's more of a Web5 approach, which if you remember back maybe three or four months ago, we, we talked about how Jack Dorsey announced Web5. And Web5 was kind of a mixture between Web2 and Web3. I'd say it's like Web2.5. It uses some, some ideas from blockchain, but it also keeps a lot of information or information outside of a shared database. Uh, you can go back and read about Web5. How, how exactly, how exactly does this decentralize things if they're not using a blockchain? Do you know? Well, I, I mean, you could, I think you could categorize the federated data as a sort of a blockchain, but it, it's not exactly the same technology that's used in a blockchain. That, that's at least my understanding of things. I, I think we'll start to learn a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can share data between different websites, but you don't necessarily have to do it in with a blockchain approach. Uh, I don't know exactly how the database is going to be stored and everything. So I don't want to say it's not a blockchain. Maybe it's some weird form of a blockchain. Uh, basically, App Protocol shares some data with a network of sites running it, but it doesn't share all the data as far as I'm aware. Um, so several tweet replies were made towards Jack Dorsey when he tweeted about the app protocol yesterday afternoon. And he surprisingly replied to many of these. And I want to thank Goldberry. I want to thank the sarcasm on DSO for initially pointing these out. Uh, and, he, and I'm just going to go over some of the tweets and some of the replies that mention the DSO protocol. So the sarcasm actually tweeted, uh, Jack, you ignore DSO protocol because you want to earn money from Blue Sky. And Jack replied, sarcasm doesn't suit you. Um, I, I disagree with Jack on that. But, but I, I don't know if Jack is actually trying to earn money from Blue Sky. I think that he truly does believe in a decentralized social blockchain because I think he's learned a lot from Twitter and the pitfalls of having the centralized blockchain slash that's owned by a Blockchain slash semi-blockchain, I guess you could say. Yeah, uh, so Nifty Invest also replied to Jack Dorsey, and he said, I'm disappointed in Jack. Pushing a trash P2P database, person-to-person -person database, that claims to be decentralized. It's not on the blockchain, and there's no innovative social aspects. DSO protocol already solves the problem that he created and he's ignoring. And Jack replied, disappointed you believe blindly that anything needs, everything needs to be on the blockchain. And I, I kind of agree with Jack in that I don't think everything does need to be on a blockchain. I think there's ways around that. Uh, I don't think it hurts if everything is on a blockchain as long as it's it works, it's fast, and it's affordable, which I think DSO falls into that. So I think both of them are kind of right in that. And finally, ZN Meads reply, and, and this, is, this is my favorite, and I think it hits the nail on the head. It, ZN Meads said, no one wants, you, wants your centralized walled garden, Jack. Uh, you ignored DSO protocol at your peril. Um, I don't totally agree with, with that. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's a centralized walled garden. I think that some aspects of at protocol could maybe be categorized as that. But Jack's response, I think, resonates well. And he said, competition is this, in this space is a good thing, not to anyone's peril. DSO can use this protocol too. And I think that's, that's so true. And I think that as we move forward, there's going to be many decentralized aspects of Web3 that that come about, whether it's blockchain related or not. And I think all of these are going to eventually work together and they're going to be assets to each other, not really downfalls or competitors. 
I, I, I mean, I can see some competition coming in at some point, but right now it's too early in the stage for that to take place. I think, you know, people who own the DSO token are going to want DSO to succeed. People who don't own it and people who are more of the mainstream mindset are probably going to think, you know, Jack Dorsey's behind this. I'm going to, you know, jump on board with this. Whether, you know, they can be, whether they're competitors or complementary to one another, I think I think we had to wait and see how that all unfolds. Well, yeah, and and Jack Dorsey isn't really behind it. I mean, he's behind it in that he's pushing the technology, but he really isn't affiliated with Blue Sky or with App Protocol. Maybe he will be in the future. Uh, we don't know, but I, I think overall it's a net positive. I think that Jack is actually talking about DSO. He knows about DSO. Uh, I think that decentralized social media. This proves, Jack Dorsey's trying to push this, this proves that decentralized media, social media is something that's coming in the future and something that I think will be mainstream. So it's definitely a positive, I think, all around in, in a space. Yeah. And I apologize to those who hear Brian in slow motion. We're having some internet issues. I just bought a new router and I'm trying to get it, get it worked out right. So if Brian was a little choppy during that whole spiel, we are sorry. Uh, so moving on, let's move on to Natter. Uh, Natter yesterday made a post saying the shipping never stops. Wonder what will be next. And he showed a screenshot from the roadmap. And that roadmap showed the mega swap launch, on-chain group chats, and a new COO. So he's kind of hinting at one of these, maybe multiple items on this list are, are going to be launched pretty soon. And Van Halen did tell me this morning that there is a lot of code being added for group chats and he thinks that it might cause another hard fork but we'll have to wait and see on that and megaswap megaswap has launched so megaswap is one of those things because cfky this morning on the deso blockchain posted that he just tried megaswap.xyz and it worked he said he got himself a few deso dollars so you can now also check out Megaswap by going to megaswap.xyz. I tried it out this morning, and you can exchange DSO dollars for DSO, for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for Solana, and a few other cryptocurrencies right now. And it goes both ways. You can do Bitcoin to DSO dollar, Bitcoin to DSO, Bitcoin to Ethereum. And there is a slight fee, I noticed. Uh, for example, when I put in one Bitcoin to get one DSO dollar, it translated to $19,171.15 in Bitcoin for $18,958.98 in the DSO dollar. So that's about a $215.17 fee, which is approximately 1.12% or so. I also tried the exchange from Ethereum over to DSO dollar, and the fee was about 1.4%. I'm not sure exactly how these fees are being calculated. I assume Ethereum is going to have higher gas fees, so those fees are going to have to be higher. I don't know how much DSO is making from this. I don't know how, how much is profit, how much is just the cost of running the service. But I'm sure we'll find out more about that in the near future. Yeah, it's, it's definitely big. I, I definitely think there's going to be a lot of use cases for this, uh, whether you're running a DSO node and you want to allow for transfers or whether you just want to use it as kind of your personal exchange service. Yeah, and I think it's going to allow other apps built on DSO to accept different cryptocurrencies for DSO native apps and DSO native features. So it's definitely going to be a major help, I think, on, in bringing developers and users onto the DSO blockchain. So Natter is also offering a ton of diamonds to those who make, quote, strong posts as long form posts on Diamond. Of course, Diamond launched a long form post on the DSO blockchain a few weeks ago. Uh, he said he's going to be giving five diamonds, which is approximately $10 or so, to any strong post he reads this week, and six diamonds for anything that blows him away. So blow Natter away with a post, and you'll get six diamonds. Those six diamonds, that'll be worth like oh, well over $1,000 when DSO was valued at $200 a coin. Yeah, these long form posts are great for DSO because if people share them outside of DSO, it's going to bring new people to DSO when they come to read them. So I, I like the idea. And, and I think that I feel that Natter should be doing this more offering incentives and rewards to get writers here. I, I think that that could actually spawn some growth on DSO. 
Yeah, I agree. So Pearl, they put out a post yesterday thanking everyone who applied to their Emerging, emerging Creators Accelerator program. Uh, Mossify was a speaker for that, I think it was last week. Uh, the first week kicked off yesterday, so I guess Mossify was the speaker yesterday. Anyhow, the first, <laughs> the first week kicked off yesterday, and they said that they can't wait to introduce us to these new emerging creators. These are people who have between 10,000 and 250,000 followers on other social media platforms. Unfortunately, they weren't able to accept all applicants, but they did say that they're very hopeful that they will have a second round, another launch in the near future. So the reason they couldn't accept everyone is because they want to have really clear one-on-one -on -one time with each of these individuals and their team is only so big. Yeah. I, I, and I love everything Pearl is doing. I, I think that they're going to be an integral part in, I think, attracting users to DSO as well in the coming months with some, some things that are rolling out. Uh, so talk about talking about things that are rolling out, Zirkles. Uh, they actually made a post and they, they teased the launch of something tomorrow. I'm really excited to see what, what it is. And we plan to have them on our show sometime next week uh, to further discuss it. But Zirkle is doing great things. Um, I, I think that they have some great ideas. And as, as they continue to build, we're kind of trying, we're kind of starting to realize some of these ideas. And uh, moving on, Antra. Antra made an announcement as well. Antra is hosting a virtual event with DSO talking about Web3. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And best yet, all attendees will receive free DSO. I don't know if it's 10 cents or $10,000. I'm just guessing it's not $10,000. <laughs> I think it's going to probably make it worth your while, though. So celebrity author, producer, and director Aaron Uze if I'm saying that right, is trying to get endorsed to become a verified creator on the social world. Michelle Lord actually tagged us in a post this morning saying that she had a long conversation with him. Uh, he sent her some videos, whatnot. So I reached out to him as well on Instagram, his uh, verified Instagram account, and wanted to verify that it really is him on DSO. And he has confirmed that it is. Um, he does need some people to verify him so he can get that verified check mark, or I guess I should say endorse him so he can get the verified check mark on DSocial World. Definitely welcome him to DSO. Uh, uh, talk with him. He sounds like a really, really interesting guy. Um, I hope I hope you remain active on DSO, Aaron. I know you're back and you seem to be super active as of late. Uh, Aaron has 205 thousand over 205,000 followers on Instagram and over 55,000 followers on Twitter so he's definitely an influencer who has potential to bring some of his followers on to DSO and into our great community yeah so tell us about the all-time NFT data that we just launched on NFTZ this morning yeah so we didn't actually launch it but we updated it because we were using Postgres for the data previously we synced with the actual blockchain and those numbers have actually changed quite significantly so the total NFTs sold on DSO all time how much how many do you think there were Brian I'm going to guess uh, 163,936 man you got it right on the money uh, yeah, 163,936 NFTs all time for a volume of 2.721 million, $2,721,992.23. Uh, these top volume sellers are led by Dow Dow, uh, who had one point, over $1.5 million in sales. And Dow Dow is followed by Clout Punk, Unicat, Wilfred Chung, Seals, Scrutinize, Clay Oglesby, Overclout, Effed up cats and Desomon, a uh, bunch of OGs to, on the Deso blockchain, but some of pe these people are making a ton of money selling NFTs. So the Swaths and Clout Jack, they launched their NFT live auction on NFTZ.me yesterday. It ends at 2 p.m. Eastern time today. I think the NFTs up to two Deso or so. I'm not 100% sure. You can check it out by going to Swaths.NFTZ.me. Uh, and Clout Jack's Season 2 also officially is underway. They launched. You can now mint your Clout Jack Season 2 NFT. Great Halloween NFT project. We had Jody Bossert and uh, Chairman Slav Dig Don on our show two days ago. They're two of the individuals behind Clout Jack's. You can mint your NFT at cloutjacks.net. Cloutjacks.net. You can mint it, and then you can see all the details at cloutjacks.nftz.me. 
Yeah, great project. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this progresses. Uh, they, the way they, they merge this prize giveaway with different axes and weapons and stuff that you can get and win based on what you get. I think it's, I think it's going to add this fun element to the NFT space on DSO. And there's so many NFTs they're giving away from DSO OG collections. So definitely partake in it. You're going to get to win some free NFTs. So as many of you know, NFTZ.me is the only current place on the DSO blockchain where you can post and view live time DSO auctions. If you go to NFTZ dot me for such auctions you can see all of the auctions ending soon i just want to highlight a few of them ending today uh mythica nft uh it's entitled australia doesn't exist this one is really really cool and it ends at 11 45 a.m eastern time a seals seals nft number 152 is being auctioned off by shady acres and that ends at 1 15 p.m eastern time and there's another flyman nft by brutal that ends at 1 40 p.m eastern time and it Yet another Flyman that's being auctioned off, not by Brutal on the primary market, but by Divine on the secondary market. That ends at midnight Eastern time. And there's a Goosies, a Goosies from last Halloween. It's called Spoofies. It has a Halloween-themed NFT, but from 2021, it's being auctioned off by Z and Mead, and that ends at 2.40 p.m. Eastern time. Man, a retro Goosies Halloween NFT. Sounds good. Uh, so I just want to quickly get to the top 10 people who bid on the most DSO NFTs over the last 24 hours, according to the NFTZ, they are as follows. Crypto Dwang, Andrea SPZ, Coco Latos, LSM27, oh, I'm sorry, LSM127, Daryl Gold, Tianju, Mr. Music, 012345, Apertures, and Crypto Kenny Kenny. And the top diamond and creators over the last 24 hours, according to our friends at Alton Base, these people received the most diamonds, uh, or tips on their posts and replies on DSO blockchain in the last day. Natter was number one, followed by Lil Lover, who was featured on DSocial World yesterday uh, from Estonia, uh, followed by Cyberpunk Apes, Krasenstein, which is us, Bullock, Crypto Info, Happy Rabbit, Dr. Rob, Miami Japan, Rhubarb, and Clout Women Unite. Congratulations, and thanks to Miss Katie Ann for providing us with this list yet again of the DSO events taking place today. Discordify on Vibe Hut with one Dolinsky take place at 10 a 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. At 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time is Web3 Wednesdays with Caleb and Sean Tron on Entra. At 2 p.m. Eastern Time is Tech and Web3 Legal Office Hours with Francesca Witzberg, Sean Tron, Michael Mara, the CEO of Entra, all on Entra. At 7 p.m. Eastern Time is Web3 Pills NFT Wednesday on Twitter, Twitter Spaces with Alex Valetis, former core team member of DSO. And at 8.30 p.m. is Web3 Weekly Digest on Entre with Mark Angelos. And I just want to welcome back four individuals who had left DSO, who have come back to take part in the blockchain over the last 24 hours. Uh, Art Station, uh, DSO OG, Jewel1KO, BitBoss, good to see you back, BitBoss, and the Charlie Brown. And that's the news we have for today. And we will talk to everyone tomorrow.